and chakra juice. Which one you want to blend? Needs to be done. Okay. You take the next. All right, I'll take the other. Care about you, Mark? Yes, I will. Barbara, how would you like it? You like them standing or sitting or? Then he can sit there, and that'd be great. Errol. They can do. They can stand. Uh, if if so you're going to, yeah, he's. They're both fine. The two actors. Okay, because you can direct. Who's? No. Yes. Nice one. Oh, nice one. Yeah, but you, 1958. What do you want me to? Do? You're fine. Okay. Unless you guys want to be in the same camera, so I don't have to like just mm -hmm. fade um, in and fade out. Just, so you have to be closer. Closer. If that's your goal. We're sitting next to each other. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you ha if you're both in the camera frame. Then I won't have to go. And, and, and. This Perhaps this we way, should right? come over here so Pierre could have the board over no, here. No, 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 don't worry about that. Yeah, you could do that. You could both sit. You, you could I just can, back up a back. tiny bit, like a eight inches, and he could sit next, at some point. Right over here? No, next to you, I'll not on the lab or anything. No, no. I, fine. So on this fine Friday evening, we're going to be reading Plato's dialogue, The Lysis. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate. I'll be playing Socrates, and Danny will be playing Hippolytus. And I'm Ingmar. Hippo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was making my way from the academy. Take two. I was making my way from the academy straight to the Lyceum, by the road outside the town hall, just under the wall. And when I reached the little gate that leads to the spring of Panops, I chanced there upon Hippotheles, son of Hieronymus, and Ctesippus of Pi Pyania, and some other youths with them, standing in a group together. Then Hippotheles, as he saw me approaching, said, Socrates, whither away and whence? From the academy, I replied, on my way straight to the Lyceum. Come over here, straight to us. You will not put here in here, but you may as well. Where do you mean? I asked, and what is your company? Here. He Just said, show me the there. Wall. Sorry. Well, that's, he and I shift. Socrates' Sorry. middle name is I, <laughs> and Hippothales' middle name is he. Right. Here. He said, showing me there just opposite the wall, a sort of enclosure and a door standing open. We pass our time there. Not only we ourselves, but others besides, a great many, and handsome. And what, pray, is this place, and what your pastime? A wrestling school of recent construction. And our pastime chiefly consists of discussions in which we should be happy to let you have a share. That is very good of you, I said. And who does the teaching in there? Your own comrade and supporter, Mikus. Upon my word, he is no slight person, but a qualified professor. Then will you please come in with us? so as to see for yourself the company we have in there. I should be glad to hear first on what terms I am to enter, and who is the beautiful one. Each of us has a different fancy, Socrates. Well, and who is yours, Hippotheles? Tell me that. At this question he blushed, so I said, Ah, Hippotheles, son of Hieronymus, you need not trouble to tell me whether you are in love with somebody or not, for I know you are not only in love, but also far advanced already in your passion. In everything else I may be a poor, useless creature, but there is one gift that I have somehow from heaven to be able to recognize quickly a lover or a beloved. When he heard this, he blushed much more than ever. Then Ctesippus remarked, Quite charming the way you blush, you fulfilled your pathways and shrink from telling Socrates the name. Yet if he spends but a little time with you, he will find you a regular torment, as he hears you repeat it again and again. He has deafened our ears, I can tell you, Socrates, by cramming them with lysis, let him be a trifle in liquor, and as likely as not, we start out of our sleep, fancying we hear the name lysis. The descriptions he gives us in conversations, though dreadful enough, are not so very bad. It is when, we, when he sets about inundating us with his poems and prose compositions. More dreadful than all, he actually sings about his favorite in an extraordinary voice, which we have the trial of hearing. And now, at a question from you, he blushes. 
Lysis, apparently, is somebody quite young. This I infer from the fact that I did not recognize the name when I heard it. That's because they do not usually call him by his name. He still goes by his paternal title, as his father is so very well known. You must, I am sure, be anything but ignorant of the boy's appearance. That alone would be enough to know him by. Let me hear whose son he is. The eldest son of Democrates of Exone. Ah, oh, well, Hippothales, what an altogether noble and gallant love you have discovered there. Now please, go on and give me a performance like those that you give your friends here, so that I may know whether you understand what a lover ought to say of his favorite, to his face, or to others. Do you attach any weight, Socrates, to anything you have heard this fellow say? Tell me, do you deny being in love with the person he mentions? Not I, but I do deny that I make poems and compositions on my favorite. He's in a bad way. Why, he raves like a madman. Hippophiles, I do not want to hear your verses or any ode that you may have indicted to the youth. I only ask for their purport, that I may know your manner of dealing with your favorite. I expect this fellow will tell you. He has an accurate knowledge and recollection of them. If there is any truth in what he says of my having dinned them so constantly in his ears. Quite so, huh? quite so on my soul. And a ridiculous story it is to Socrates, to be a lover and to be singularly intent on, one bo on one's boy, yet to have nothing particular to tell him that a mere boy could not say is surely ridiculous. But he only writes and relates things that the whole city sings of recalling Democrates and the boy's grandfather Lysis and all his ancestors with their wealth and the horses they kept and their victories in Delphi, the Isthmus and Nemea, with chariot teams and coursers, in addition even hoarier antiquities than those. Only two days ago he was recounting to us some poem of his, The Entertainment of Hercules, how on account of his kinship with Hercules, their forefather welcomed the hero, being himself the offspring of Zeus, was the daughter of their Demes founder. Such old wives' tales and many more of the sort, Socrates. These are the things he tells and trolls while compelling us to be his audience. When I heard this, I said, Oh, you ridiculous Hippothles, do you compose and chant a triumph song on yourself before you have won your victory? It is not on myself, Socrates, that I either compose or chant it. You think not. Then what is the truth of it? Most certainly it is you to whom these songs refer. For if you prevail on your favorite, and he is such as you describe, all that you have spoken and sung will be so much glory to you, and a veritable eulogy upon your triumph in having secured such a favorite as that. Whereas if he eludes your grasp, the higher the terms of your eulogy of your favorite, the greater will seem to be the charms and virtues you have lost and you will be ridiculed accordingly. Hence anyone who deals wisely in love matters, my friend, does not praise his beloved until he prevails, for fear of what the future may have in store for him. And besides, these handsome boys, when so praised and extolled, become full of pride and haughtiness. Do you not think so? I do. And then, the haughtier they are, the haughtier they are, the harder grows the task of capturing them. Yes, apparently. And what do you think of a hunter who should scare away his quarry in hunting and make it harder to catch? Clearly he would be a poor one. And hence to use speech and song, not for charming, but for driving wild, would be gross fatuity. Would it not? I think so. <laughs> then take care, Hippothales, not to make yourself guilty of all these things by your verse making, indeed I fancy you will not like to allow that a man who damages himself by poetry can be a good poet, so long as he is damaging to himself. Oh, my soul, no. Of course, it would be most absurd. But this is the very reason, Socrates, why I impart my feelings to you and ask you for any useful advice you can give as to what conversation or conduct will help to endear one to one's favorite. That is not an easy thing to tell, but if you will agree to get him to have a talk with me, I dare say I could show you an example of the conversation you should hold with him, 
instead of those things that your friends say you speak and sing. There's no difficulty about that. If you go in with Ctesippus here and take a seat and talk, I think he will come to you of his own accord. He is singularly fond of listening, Socrates, and besides, they are keeping the Hermea. So that the youths and boys are all mingled together. So he will come to you. But if he does not, Thespis is intimate with him as being a cousin of Menexenus. For Lysis has chosen Menexenus for his particular friend. So let Thespis call him if you find that he does not come of himself. That is what I must do. Whereupon I took Ctesippus with me into the wrestling school, and the others came after us. When we got inside, we found that the boys had performed the sacrifice in the place. <laughs> and, as the ceremonial business was now almost over, they were all playing at knuckle bones and wearing their finest attire. Most of them were playing in the, in the court out of doors, but some were at a game of odd and even in a corner of the undressing room with a great lot of knuckle bones, which they drew from little baskets, and there were others standing about them and looking on. Among these was Lysis. He stood among the boys and youths with a garland on his head, a distinguished figure, deserving not merely the name of well-favored, but also of well-made and well-bred. As for us, we went and sat apart on the opposite side, for it was quiet there, and started some talk amongst ourselves. The result was that Lysis ever and anon turned round to observe us and was obviously eager to join us. For a while, however, he hesitated, being too shy to approach us alone, till Menexenus stepped in for a moment from his game in the court, and on seeing me and Ctesippus came to take a seat beside us. When Lysis saw him, he came along too, and sat down with Menexenus. Then all the others came to us also, and I must add that Hippotheles, when he saw a good many of them standing there, stood so as to be screened by them, in a position where he thought Lysis would not catch sight of him, as he, <coughs> as he feared that he might irritate him. In this way he stood by and listened. Then I, looking at Menexenus, asked him, Son of Demophon, which is the elder of you two? It is a point in dispute between us. Then you must also be at variance as to which <coughs> as to which is the nobler. Yes, to be sure. And moreover, which is the more beautiful likewise. <laughs> this This made them both laugh. But of course I shall not ask which of you is the wealthier, for you are friends, are you not? Certainly we are. And you know friends are said to have everything in common so that here at least there will be no difference between you if what you say of your friendship is true. True. They agreed. After that I was proceeding to ask them which was the juster and wiser of the two when I was interrupted by somebody who came and fetched away Menexenus, saying that the wrestling master was calling him. I understood that he was taking some part in the rites. So he went off, and then I asked Lysis, I suppose, Lysis, your father and mother are exceedingly fond of you. Want to do that? Okay. Yes. Brad? I'll be licensed in. Thank you. In reply, oh, you should come up here. I have a different translation. Use mine. Okay. I'll use yours. Okay. Oh, what is the change in time? I suppose, Lysis, your father and mother are exceedingly fond of you. Oh, yes, to be sure. Then they would like you to be as happy as possible. Yes, of course. Do you consider that a man is happy when enslaved and restricted from doing everything he desires? Not I, on my word. Then if your father and mother are fond of you and desire to see you happy, it is perfectly plain that they are anxious to secure your happiness. They must be, of course. Hence they allow you to do what you like, and never scold you or hinder you from doing what you desire. Yes, they do, Socrates, I assure you. They stop me from doing a great many things. How do you mean? They wish you to be happy, and yet hinder you from doing what you like? But answer me this. Suppose you desire to ride in one of your father's chariots. 
and hold the reins in some race. They will not allow you, but will prevent you? That is so to be sure. They will not allow me. But whom would they allow? There is a driver in my father's pay. Uh, what do you say? A hireling, whom they trust rather than you, so that he can do whatever he pleases with the horses, and they pay him besides a salary for doing that? Why, of course. <clears throat> Well, but they trust you with the control of the mule cart, and if you wanted to take the whip and lash the team, they would let you? Nothing of the sort. Why? Is nobody allowed to lash them? Oh, yes, the mule, muleteer. Is he a slave or a freeman? A slave. So it seems that they value a slave more highly than you, their son, and entrust him, rather than you with their property and allow him to do what he likes while preventing you. And now there is one more thing, one thing more you must tell me. Do they let you control your own self? Or will they not trust you in that either? Of course they do not. But someone controls <laughs> you? Yes, my tutor here. Is he a slave? Why, certainly, he belongs to us. What a strange thing. A free person controlled by a slave. <laughs> but how does this tutor actually exert his control over you? By asking me to, by taking me to school, I suppose. And your schoolmasters, can it be that they also control you? I should think they do. Then quite a large number of masters and controllers are deliberately sent over you by your father. But when you come home to your mother, she surely lets you do what you like. That she may make you happy, either with her wool or her loom when she is weaving. I take it she does not prevent you from handling her batten, or her comb, or any other of her woolwork implements. Oh, I promise you, Socrates, not only does she prevent me, but I should get a beating as well if I laid hands on them. Good heavens! Can it be that you have done your father or mother some wrong? On my word, no. Well, what reason can they have for so strangely preventing you from being happy and doing what you like? Hmm. Why do they maintain you all day long in constant servitude to somebody? so that, in a word, you do hardly a single thing that you desire. And thus it would seem you get no advantage from all your great possessions. Nay, anyone else controls them rather than you, nor from your own person, though so well born, which is also shepherded and managed by another, while you, Lysis, control nobody and do nothing that you desire. It is because I am not yet of age, Socrates. That can hardly be the hindrance, son of Democrates, since there is a certain amount, I imagine, that your father and mother entrust to you without waiting until you come of age. For when they want some reading or writing done for them, it is you, I conceive, whom they appoint to do it before any others of the household. Is it not so? Quite so. And you are free there to choose which letter you shall write first and which second, and you have a like choice in reading. And I suppose when you take your lyre, Neither your father nor your mother prevents you from tightening or slackening what string you please, or from using your finger or your plectrum at will. Or do they prevent you? Oh, no. Then whatever can be the reason, Lysis, why they do not prevent you here, while in the matters we were just mentioning, they do. I suppose because I understand these things, but not those others. Very well, my excellent friend. So it is not your coming of age that your father is waiting for as the time for entrusting you with everything, but on the day when he considers you to have a better intelligence than himself, he will entrust you with himself and all that is his. Yes, I think so. Very well. But tell me, does not your neighbor observe the same rule as your father towards you? Do you think he will entrust you with the management of his house as soon as he considers you to have a better idea of its management than himself? Or will he direct it himself? I should say he would entrust it to me. Well then, do you not think that the Athenians will entrust you with their affairs when they perceive that you have sufficient intelligence? I do. Ah, do let me ask this. What, pray, of the great king, would he allow his eldest son, heir apparent to the throne of Asia, to put what he chose into the royal stew? Or would he prefer us to do it, supposing we came before him and convinced him that we had a better notion than his son of preparing a tasty dish? Clearly he would prefer us. And he would not allow the prince to put in the smallest bit, 
whereas he would let us have our way even if we wanted to put in salt by the handful. Why, of course. Again, if his son had something the matter with his eyes, would he let him meddle with them himself if he considered him to be no doctor, or would he prevent him? He would prevent him. But if he supposed us to have, but if he supposed us to have medical skill, he would not prevent us, I imagine, even though we wanted to pull the eyes open and sprinkle them with ashes, so long as he believed our judgment to be sound. That is true. So he would entrust us, rather than himself or his son, with all his other affairs besides. Wherever he may feel, we are more skilled than they. Necessarily. The case then, my dear Lysis, I said, stands thus. With regards to matters in which we become intelligent, everyone will entrust us with them, whether Greeks or foreigners, men or women, and in such matters we shall do as we please, and nobody will care to obstruct us. Nay, not only shall we ourselves be free and have control of others in these affairs, but they will also belong to us, since we shall derive advantage from them. Whereas in all those for which we have failed to acquire intelligence, so far will anyone be from permitting us to deal with them as we think fit, that everybody will do his utmost to obstruct us, not merely strangers, but father and mother, and any more intimate person than they. And we, on our part, shall be subject to others in such matters, which will be no concern of ours, since we shall draw no advantage from them. Do you agree to this account of the case? I agree. Then will anyone count us his friends, or have any affection for us in those matters for which we are useless? Surely not. So now you see, your father does not love you, nor does anyone love anyone else, so far as one is useless. Apparently not. Then if you can become wise, my boy, everybody will be your friend. Everyone will be intimate with you, since you will be useful and good. Otherwise, no one at all. Not your father, nor your mother, nor your intimate connections will be your friends. Now, is it possible, Lysis, to have a high notion of yourself in matters of which you have as yet no notion? Why? How can I? Then if you are in need of a teacher, you have as yet no notion of things. True. Nor can you have a great notion of yourself if you are still notionless. Upon my word, Socrates, I do not see how I can. On hearing him answer this, I glanced at Hippotheles and nearly made a blunder, for it came into my mind to say, Where are you, Hippotheles? This is the way, Hippotheles, in which you should talk to your favorite, humbling and reducing him, instead of puffing him up and spoiling him as you do now. Well, I noticed that he was in an agony of embarrassment at what he had been saying, and I remembered how, in standing near, he wished to hide himself from Lysis. <laughs> so I checked myself and withheld my speech. In the meantime, Menexenus came back and sat down by Lysis in the place he had left on going out. Then Lysis, in a most playful, affectionate manner, unobserved by Menexenus, said softly to me, Socrates, tell Menexenus what you've been saying to me. To which I replied, You shall tell it him yourself, Lysis, for you gave it your closest attention. I did indeed. Then try to recollect it as well as you can, so that you tell him the whole of it clearly. But if you forget any of it, mind that you ask me for it again when next you meet me. I will do so, Socrates, by all means, I assure you. But tell him something else that I may hear it too until it is time to go home. Well, I must do so, since it is you who bid me. But be ready to come to my support in case Menexenus attempts to refute me. You know what a cute... You know what a keen disputant he is. Um, oh, yes, on my word, very keen. That is why I want you to have a talk with him. So that I may make myself ridiculous? No, no, indeed. <laughs> I want you to trounce him. Well, how can I? It is not easy <laughs> when the fellow is so formidable, a pupil of Catespus. And here, do you not see, is Catespus himself. 
Oh, take no heed of anyone, Socrates. Just go on and have a talk with him. Well, I must comply. Now, as these words pass between us... Oh, it's not... Uh, what is this feast that you two are having by yourselves without allowing us to share in your talk? Well, well, we must give you a share. My friend here fails to understand something that I have been saying, but tells me he thinks Menexenus knows, and he urges me to question him. Why not ask him then? But I am going to. Now please answer, Menexenus, whatever question I may ask you. There is a certain possession that I have desired from my childhood, as everyone does in his own way. One person wants to get possession of horses, another dogs, another money, and another distinctions, or honors. Of these things I reck little. But for the possession of friends, I have quite a passionate longing, and would rather obtain a good friend than the best quail or cock in the world. Yes, and rather, I swear, than any horse or dog. I believe indeed by the dog that rather than all Darius's gold, I would choose to gain a dear comrade far sooner than I would Darius himself, so fond I am of my comrades. Accordingly, when I see you and Lysis together, I am quite beside myself, and congratulate you on being able, at such an early age, to gain this possession so quickly and easily, since you, Menexenus, have so quickly and surely acquired his friendship, and he likewise yours. Whereas I am so far from acquiring such a thing, that I do not even know in what way one person becomes a friend of another and am constrained to ask you about this very point in view of your experience. Now tell me, when one person loves another, which of the two becomes friend of the other? The loving of the loved or the loved of the loving? Or is there no difference? There is none, in my opinion. Well, how is that? Do you mean that both become friends mutually when there is only one loving the other? Yes, I think so. But I ask you, is it not possible for one loving not to be loved in return by him whom he loves? It is. But again, may he not even be hated while loving? This, I imagine, is the sort of thing that lovers do sometimes seem to incur with their favorites. They love them with all their might, yet they feel either that they are not loved in return, or that they are actually hated. Or do you not think this is true? Very true. Now, in such a case, the one loves and the other is loved. Yes. Which of the two, then, is a friend of the other? Is the loving a friend of the loved? whether in fact he is loved in return, or is even hated, or is the loved a friend of the loving? <laughs> or again, is neither of them in such a case friend of the other if both do not love mutually? At any rate, it looks as if they're, this were so. So you see, we now hold a different view from what we held before. At first we said that if one of them loved, both were friends. But now, if both do not love, neither is a friend. It looks like it. So there is no such thing as a friend for the lover who is not loved in return. Mm, apparently not. And so we find no horse lovers where the horses do not love in return. No quail lovers, dog lovers, <laughs> wine lovers, or sport lovers on such terms. Nor any lovers of wisdom if she returns not their love. Or does each person love these things while yet failing to make friends of them? And was it a lying poet who said, Happy to have your children as friends and your trampling horses, scent snuffing hounds and a host when you travel abroad? I do not think so. But do you think he spoke the truth? Yes. Then the loved object is a friend to the lover, it would seem, Menexenus alike whether it loves or hates. For instance, newborn children who have either not begun to love or already hate, if punished by their mother or their father, are yet at that very moment and in spite of their hate especially and preeminently friends to their parents. I think so. 
That is the case. Then this argument shows that it is not the lover who is a friend, but the loved. Mm, apparently. And it is the hated who is an enemy, not the hater. Evidently. Then people must often be loved by their enemies and hated by their friends, and be friends to their enemies and enemies to their friends, if the loved object is a friend rather than the loving agent. And yet, it is a gross absurdity, my dear friend, I should say rather an impossibility, that one should be an enemy to one's friend, and a friend to one's enemy. You appear to be right there, Socrates. Then if that is impossible, it is the loving that must be a friend of the loved. Evidently. And so the hating, on the other hand, will be an enemy of the hated. Necessarily. Hence, in the end, we shall find ourselves compelled to agree to the same statement as we made before, that frequently a man is a friend of one who is no friend, and frequently even of an enemy, when he loves one who loves not, or even hates. While frequently a man may be an enemy of one who is no enemy, or even a friend, when he hates one who hates not, or even loves. It looks like it. What then are we to make of it? If neither the loving are to be friends, nor the loved, nor both the loving and loved together. For apart from these, are there any others left for us to cite as becoming friends to one another? For my part, Socrates, I declare I see no sort of shift. Can it be, Menexenus, that all through there has been something wrong with our inquiry? I think there has. Oh, I think there has, Socrates. And I'm blushing. <laughs> and blushed as soon as he had said it, for it oh. struck me that the words escaped him unintentionally through his closely applying his mind to our talk, as he had noticeably done all the time he was listening. So then, as I wanted to give Menexenus a rest, and was delighted, <coughs> with, and was delighted with the others. Okay. Let's take a break. Yes. Okay. Would you agree it's obvious, and we can skip this and go on? I'd like to just see the arguments. Man, that went so fast. What? What? It went very fast. I noticed that. It's because of the uh, powerhouse reading. Now that we know effort. it went fast and there's no difficulties, we can go on. Agree? No. <laughs> I well, have a, I have if a, only one person has a oh. difficulty with it, we can ignore it. I have a difficulty. Two? Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, it's, a, it's not the majority yet. yet. Well, what's the difficulty? Well, this thing about the handful of salt. We know somebody is a... Okay. You know, and then the, the idea of ashes in the eyes. I, I can't quite understand that paragraph. I suppose I understood it. It's a geological one. Why are we talking about love also? I thought it was friendship. Well, he's quite right. Uh, when you're talking about friendship, there's no need to talk about love. No, I was refuted. <laughs> really? It's a good point. But, but you know, the, the conversation does seem to be more romantic, you know, than, you know, the friendship love. I didn't write it. <laughs> I know. Uh... <laughs> but what was Licker, the goal? Look at where do you see the difficulty and how might we represent it? Look here, how might we represent it to avoid the confusion? But first of all, is there any confusion? Yes. Or difficulty going through it? Yes. Okay. okay. If so, can you pick one sentence where you would say, this is the worst? The first one. First one. <laughs> That's where the trouble starts. <laughs> well, isn't he going through a review of the relation of the one idea to the others and their relationship to each other in a dialectic mode? Mm -hmm. Come on. Everyone, come on, try it. Pick up. Pick up. You got one? You have a sentence? Uh, a no? sentence? Yeah. Well, that's what we need. Oh, okay. He says it's it frequently happens life. then that people are enemies to those who love them. Mm. That's nuts. <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> I think I got one. 
This is Thomas Taylor translation. Ooh. Do you agree? I'm no, sorry. Shall we, therefore, be friends to anyone, and will anyone love us in those things in which we are useless? Stephanus 210C. Oh, you're backing up. Oh, that's right. The entire dialogue is in play. Huh? To the point where we... Well, oh, let's not use that. Okay. Just to tr just to see whether we can represent those. Um. <clears throat> Would you agree, whoever is directing his love towards the beloved? Or in our text that just uses the word beloved. Right. Now, the interesting thing about this is that he's talking about um, not just the person, but also. Uh, their possessions. Uh, in this case, um, it's Lysias' family's reputation and possessions and honors. <clears throat> Now, nice. would you agree in this picture, we also need the possibility of a return of affection or friendship? Agree? Mm -hmm. Now, the curious thing is that these two things are called loving. So the lover, in loving this person, may actually really have an eye of, through loving, gain in some way participate in that. This is the problem of participation, you see. Would you agree also that this person therefore may accept or reject the lover? And what's curious, what's curious, we do not agree, we have another interesting variable in here. Oh well. Here's the white shark. He. Well, he's a lover. Beloved. The lover loves the beloved. The beloved may love the lover. But there's also the activity, loving. The 
the lover may really love loving. And the particular person may not be significant. Equally well, the beloved may not, may also just like. So therefore, it can go both ways. He may really enjoy the loving. This person may really enjoy the loving, but not the lover. He may not love the beloved, but really is interested in receiving and being in that state of receiving. So, uh, five, the loving, has many ways of, of distinguishing it. <coughs> it can go two ways. And either part, e either, either one or three, can, uh, can be said to love five, the loving. And so he wants to talk about all of these. And would you agree the person may accept it or reject it? reject it, they may. Uh, now, may hate right, the beloved, may hate the lover, and still accept the loving. So, uh, I suspect that if we keep this in mind and go back over it, we should just be able to read it and talk about, as it were, the diagram, right? Because this is where he is going. Now, in it, we have that great, the statement of Socrates and his <laughs> claim. Yeah, Tony? I was there, I just had a good example, by the way, and it was bugging me. I feel a lot of people don't know anything about this, but he more than one invent, I mean, introduced me to this group. He was showing me countless things that have to do about love, and I could barely read. And so that was showing love, and he was towards me, yet I was shy away, and I felt embarrassed, you know, because I didn't know. Oh. That's one example That's I have. Right. That's you know, And then now I know I have a great love for him. But uh, in the beginning, I didn't know about my path or logos or anything. I didn't know what he was talking about. I never met a group like this. Yeah. So, yeah. That's right. That hey, look, look, look. <laughs> look. Right. Let's get Socrates' statement first. Two twelve B. Yeah, want to read it? Yeah. Now tell me, when one person loves another, which of the two becomes friend of the other? The loving of the loved or the loved of the loving? Or is there no difference? Is that what you're... That was Socrates' statement of his own position in respect to friendship. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. Now please answer, Menexenus, at the bottom of page 33 in the lobe. Now please answer, Menexenus, whatever question I may ask you. There is a certain possession that I have desired from my childhood, as everyone does in his own way. One person wants to get possession of horses, another dogs, another money, and another honors. Of these things I wreck little. Of these things I care little about, but for the possession of friends, I have quite a an erotic passion, <laughs> a passionate longing, and would rather obtain a good friend 
than the best quail or cock in the world. Yes, and rather I swear than any horse or dog. I believe indeed by the dog that rather than all Darius's gold, I would choose to gain a dear comrade far sooner than I would the great king Darius himself, so fond I am of my comrades. Accordingly, when I see you and Lysus together, I am quite beside myself and congratulate you on being able at such an early age. Okay. So, more than all the gold of Darius. I am the richest man in the world. Yeah. King of all Asia. <coughs> ah, Central Asia. Okay. So, that's high up. That's high up. So, it's in respect to that. And he says, by the way, the only thing I can really claim to know is love. Why? That's what he said. Or how to tell. Pardon how to tell who's a lover and who's a beloved. And who's a lover and who's the right away. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so he has clean vision. Yeah. And he knows about this. Therefore, let's go back and take a look at the terrible paragraph. Behind this, of course, are two major issues. Uh, there's a whole dialectic on like and unlike. So behind here is a dialectic. Pierre. What do I mean by what way one? <laughs> what it, well, I, w I was kind of joking, but serious in my question. Whatever do you mean by that? I mean, I understand what you said. Oh, good. Then I don't, then I don't need no, to say anything. Oh, I understand what you said, not what it means. Oh. Like I can repeat what, what you said. What a distinction. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I just don't. Yeah. Are you saying that... Um, I have no idea. That's why I'm asking the question. And you're talking to, I've been known to be called Pierre the Forgetful, so... Well, no, no, I was asking, you said there was a dialectic behind this yeah. of like and unlike. Yeah. Yeah, unlikeness. And so I know there is, for example, Proclus on a dialectic of likeness. Is Wonderful. that what you're referring to when you yes. say behind this? Yes. So that we, if we had the one in our mind, we could see it in the other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you have the one in the mind and can see the other, can you point it out to us? Now? <laughs> no. We interrupt this whole beautiful exploration. Okay. At, your, at no. the appropriate time. Thank you. See? I can get out of it. <laughs> Until we okay. finish. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. Okay? Because this is the issue, really. Go on. One of the fundamental issues. Like or something like it. Are they, is friendship... You know the word friendship is a curious... Strange word. Is it like uh, seamanship? <laughs> well, because of that word, the ship. <laughs> friendship. Yeah. Is friendship just like seamanship, most? Ask your neighbor. What's this doing at the end? Suffix? What is it? What is it doing? It's combining. Makes it a. It, shows, it means, therefore, it belongs to the class of maritime things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no? All right, so you tell me. God. It, that's, so, that's why they bathe horses, because they bathe, since they like to get into the water of seamanship. Uh, Look, see, what does it mean? What, I would what say it means tagged on the end. I'd say it means a skill, Pierre. Yeah. Yeah. Skill, yeah. art, so right? skill. A, a ruler, art and skill, a technical right. knowledge. It's a kind of craft that rules over right. a thing. Art. It rules, it rules over friendship. What, please? It rules over whatever word you put with it. So and it has a ruling function. It provides a benefit. And benefits. <laughs> And must therefore presuppose a knowledge. Oh, yeah. 
through the which through the use of which diagnosis. So put that remember behind here. He fires Socrates is concerned. A good friend, friendship, right? He was passionate about because that person then would have an art an art of being a friend. And that must include the idea of benefit, knowledge, and ruling, must it not? And maybe being able to tell who are the lovers and beloveds. Included. Especially if the idea of friends involved that. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Because this means there is a transfer of benefit. Mm -hmm. But what is it that does it, though? Not the person. It's the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. So, um, here, could, in terms of likeness and unlikeness, would there be a parallel between the fact that the lover and the beloved have likenesses and those who are not? Of unlikenesses? Yeah. Wouldn't you agree you always find a likeness between lovers and beloveds? They're never opposites, are they? Are they? Well, if one reaches. Are they? Miss, talking to someone who has some knowledge about this. Mm -hmm. Likeness and beloved? Yes, they're different. So that's one of the issues. See, that's why we're going to return to it on uh, 41. What do you say? Ever like and like together, God doth draw. You mean continue the the reading yeah, that they were doing? Well, that. no. I, I'm, wait a minute. No, I don't want to go there yet. Oh. No, that that would be uh, that's like and I'm like. Hold that up. Hmm. Um, it's something we read so. Far. Yes, 35. Let's pick it up at 35. Okay, 35. Is this the Yes. Um, 211, 212, 212B. Is this that terrible paragraph? <laughs> now tell me. Okay. When one person loves another, which of the two becomes the friend of the other? Now, notice ing, loving. See, this five is loving, the activity. Right. Hmm. And don't you think it ought to be said that, as far as I can see here, that friend is just another form of the same verb, right? It's mm -hmm. loving, love, beloved, it's mm -hmm. all... Uh, it's all the same. Yeah. So, therefore, to say friend, it sounds as if it's a distinction, mm -hmm. and whereas, whereas it's not. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can move to, quickly, Thomas Taylor, which I wanted to do. Who has it? I yeah, this is a Please. Terrible translation. It says, tell me, therefore, when anyone loves another, which of the two becomes the friend of the other? Same thing. Go ahead. When, tell me, therefore, when anyone loves another, which of the two becomes the friend of the other? And what would you say? <laughs> both. What would you say? Maybe. When they both... See, there's the question we want to get to this, this sentence. How is that? Do you, right, I said, do you mean that both become friends mutually when there is only one loving the other?
if the lover is loving the beloved, but it's rejected, <coughs> do both become friends mutually when there is only one loving the other? Therefore, one is loving the other, one is involved in loving the other. Do they then both become mutual friends? No. I think it has to be reciprocal. What would you say? Does that make any sense? Yes or no? No. 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 First of all, is that what it says? No. It, that's what he says. That's Next what he says. Yeah. And you would say? I'd say he's got a pathologos. <laughs> I don't know those words, so. How about no? Okay. Menexinus. If he loves this person, if this person doesn't accept it or rejects that love, is that the basis there for a friendship between one and three? No way. No. No. But he said yes. Yeah. Alright. Perish the thought. Yes, I think so, he says. But I ask you, is it not possible for one loving not to be loved in return by whom he loves? Right. It is. Yep. And that's precisely this problem. It's not return. It's rejected. Oh. And again, may he may he not even be hated? He can actually be hated. Yeah. 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 Despised. This I imagine is the sort of thing that lovers do sometimes to incur it seems with their favorites. They love with all of their might. Yet they feel either that they are not loved in return or that they're actually hated. Hey, this is what they do with their favorites. Is that when? Is that right? Yeah, that's puzzling. Wait, the the beloved? This is what they that do. That lovers do sometimes seem to incur with their favorites. Right? That is, they love with all their might. Yet they feel either that they are not loved in return or they're actually hated. We do not agree that is a kind of lover. That's, that's what isn't he's that describing. Lysis's condition? I mean, he's he's afraid to... I mean, Lysis. Isn't that uh, Hippothales' condition? He's afraid to show himself because he thinks um, Lysis will be really angry or irritated by his very presence. I don't know about hate, but... Yeah, yeah. At the minimum, you will love him. Back row. I was, yeah, I was curious by something. Is that, uh, like, what if... I see a difference in what is the ideal of love, okay... Uh, and love mm. itself. You know, one part is the ideal of love. Well, you know, so far... And the other one can learn loving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't know what it is, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, well, How do you know? you're going for this one. This guy says, hey, there really is such a thing as a loving. And that's what Socrates is trying to find or gain. Mm -hmm. Because that would then have the art, I presume. And that's why we're into it, and that's what we want to see. So, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Back in then, okay. Uh, Pierre, in terms of that, that one way to love, if you have someone who rejects your love, yeah. you go to any police blotter, and that's the, the reason for the majority of murders is the love triangle. Fatal attraction. Or, yeah. Unrequited love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let, let's put down friendship and, and it's possible rejection as the yeah. cause of numerous crimes and yeah. yes. Well I think I think that there's a difference between love and friendship in that you you can love singularly. That you can love someone without them loving you back and you, you are able to do that. But the idea of friendship, there's then it needs to be reciprocal. It needs to be back in order for there to be this idea of friendship. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. The problem is going to be, what's the difference between a friendship and a love? Oh, what's the difference? Yeah, like the Socrates talking about a, a friend that would involve a love relationship or not. Yeah, you might say, hey, difference. Okay, let's see. I see. Yeah, so look. <laughs>
We do not agree. We're right. Let's see if we can go through this page. Now, look, I think Thomas Taylor's translation is much more accurate in respect to that. But I like the lobe because you can make these distinctions in the way in which he's translating. And I think it's implicit in there if you want to see it this way. All right, but remember now, we can shift back and forth between Thomas or any other translation. Or if you're not using one, you can see it in the Greek. Is the loving a friend of the loved, whether in fact he's loved in return or is even hated? Or is the loved a friend of the loving? See, just stay with this language. Let's stay with this language. And see whether we can use our model. Is the loving five agree? Mm -hmm. Is the loving a friend of the lover of the of the lover of <laughs> Well, that would fit, though. It, I mean, the is the loving a friend of the loved? Whether in fact he's loved in return or is even hated, or is the loved a friend of the loving? Here, isn't loving isn't loving in that sense what we've been using as lover? Yeah, because it isn't doesn't doesn't seem that it's the verb. Here. Correct. No, it literally is hofilum the one who loves. The loving yes, one. Yeah. See, uh, I the, totally, I totally the loving agree. one. Is it not the case, however, that I think we're going to get into it, mm -hmm. uh, that a person can love something and devote a great deal of energy in the pursuit of it and be totally indifferent to the object? Yes. Now, therefore, what do they really love? They love loving. Oh, they, they love, love the loving. Yeah. And isn't that the examples he gives? Yeah. Right. Someone can, someone can love quail hunting, and they don't yeah, yeah, particularly yeah, love yeah, quail yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, they like but they love the hunting quail. They love the activity of loving. Yeah, that's that's not my piece. Right. Yeah. That, and would you not agree? There are not many winos in my old days who ever kissed a bottle. <laughs> Never. But they, Never. But, but they, but they love the drinking. That's a good one. They don't think, and they don't don't even think of the possibility of the bottle kissing them in return. But That's these are some of the examples he gives, doesn't he? Yeah, it's very Wait a minute, doesn't he even give the example of the child? Yeah. He said the child is what? He said, good heavens. The child is loved, and the child may hate the parent, mm -hmm. being punished. But they may still have a love towards the parent, even though they hate them. That's right. Nice. That's the truth. In the middle, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's why I'm so all children. of these cases, really in some way, are going to involve, the, I believe, this figure. Yeah. Well, mm. but, but, you know, with regards to that point about the... Um, Loving the loving, the lover loving the loving. On 15, Socrates says, it is you to whom these songs refer, indicating that Hippothales is actually in love with himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why he engages in the loving. Yeah, see, that's a way of talking, like he loves himself. Well, uh, the songs refer to him. No, 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 no. See, no, no, see. Uh, don't reject an idea. Okay. Keep it alive. Loves himself. Loves himself. No. And whether that's equivalent to something else that's here, we can decide later. Sure. But every possibility you put in here so that if someone really loves themselves, when they're doing what? Loving. When they're loving. 
trying to accrue another's honors to themselves by capturing their beloved. Well, then they love someone else. Yeah. That's not really loving himself. No. <laughs> what a besotted but we'll, fool. We'll, 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 come on, go back. <clears throat> Can we use this diagram on exactly a 212 C and D? And just look at the diagram for a minute. Can it represent this statement? Is the loving a friend of the loved? Whether in fact he is loved in return or is even hated? Or is the loved a friend of the loving? Can that be represented in this diagram? Mm -hmm. So if we went through this, would you not agree we could mark the translation with these notations? Or, you know, however you want to do it. Each of the possibilities. Because is it not true that uh, that fits a certain a certain kind of relationship. What's what relationship is that here? Is the loving is the loving a friend of the loved? Is the loving could you call the loving a friend of the loved? There's a translation See, problem there. Of course it is. That's why I, that's, that's why I totally agree with you. I could clear it up. No, I don't want you to. Okay. No, no, because we can make another one, another one for Thomas Taylor, or a third. My only point is, when you have a text, should you not have a model that fits this, this translation? Now we can make another model, and another model. Then what we're talking about is different models. <coughs> but what good would that do? I mean, the reader of Greek. Well, I, I know that and that and a uh, and a nickel will get you ride right in the subway in 1935. I mean, it just seems to confuse the, gr the Greek. I mean, if you've got different translators, you know, giving you different glimpses or ways of seeing. I mean, it's like relativism. I mean. But by the way, I think you can answer that question. What follows if different translations can be represented in different models? What follows? Well, and further, I'd want to get the purest model. I mean, I would too. Then you'd pick the translation I like. <laughs> Oh no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, if you're, no, see, this is a this really important, fun issue. That's why I want to get in Thomas Taylor, as I said later. But two things. Does, does the language that's being used here, can we use this to represent it? Two, does it also describe certain kinds of relationships that we know about? either personally or from literature, wherever you find it. Mm -hmm. Yes. If so, then, then these models may be more accurate in describing the full range of the kinds of relationships that we find from our experience one way or the other than another. I was just going to say that that makes the most sense to me. I, when, it, when it first was brought up, I, I thought my, my knee-jerk reaction was that, uh, yeah, we should just let's go from the Greek and let's just answer it right now. But uh, there's a problem in that, in that if we, if we have these different models, I mean, we should essentially be able to determine it uh, with the kind of accuracy of a geometry problem <coughs> by the time we get to the end of the dialogue. And if, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, we may make a mistake in, unless our, unless our Greek is better, that we, we can, 
there's that there's it's more exact uh, to that the way that we can read something and misunderstand it in English, unless our Greek is so much better than our English, uh, we might run into the same problem where we might uh, actually choose the wrong model, even though it appears to be obvious in the Greek. Okay, let me raise another possibility. What if it turns out uh, we can, we can have three models different from one over another? <clears throat> It would be like the blind man with the elephant, right? I mean, you know what it might say? It might say, one conclusion might be, that the Greek allows all three. In a much broader description of the same situation. Since, since let us assume the three people who translated happen to know Greek. Is that a fair assumption? <laughs> See, when I give opinion, people laugh at it. Absolutely. <laughs> no, would that follow? Come on, would that follow then? I think this translator is an asshole. But here, <laughs> yeah, way in the back first. Yeah, yeah I sorry. What? 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 I did a paint Land. for you by love and beauty long ago, and I'm just thinking about that. You know, I mean, because it's the ideal of love, what the problem is with all of it, everything. And I don't mean that love is just one of the greatest spirits, right? So, how could it be any different? See, well, the ideal of what's coming out is like an ideal of something. Sure. And that's not, no, that's not love itself, no. Okay, look, we can even go further. Um, what do the lovers love? See, there's relationship between Lysias and the Symposium, as there is between Lysias and Charmides, that they relate. And certainly with the Symposium, we can create a model. It's not this one. And features. So, Shall we risk the neck hold it? Um, <clears throat> but, no booyah. Okay. Um, so you gave the, the child and mother example as an example for showing that the, the act of loving should be part of the model. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Page. Let's get everyone there. 37. What's the Stephanus number? I think we can start it there on 37 on the bottom. Yeah. So I think the position was that though the child hates the parent, the child is loving the parent. That, that the, child is hated, <coughs> the child still has love for the parent during punishment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's not how I read the, the English. Um. But do you think he spoke the truth? Yes. Then the loved object is a friend to the lover. Mm -hmm. Then the loved object, three, mm -hmm. right? The loved object is a friend to the lover. So wait, uh, does that drawing show that the, the loved object is acting as a friend to the lover, or? Well, this is the loved. Mm. Uh, Acting. This, this is the lover. <clears throat> so that, that's the exact phrase that actually I disagree with. <laughs> I don't whether see... It, whether it loves or hates. Yeah. Disagree with then the loved object as a friend to the loved. Well, no, he has to make a case of this, doesn't he? <laughs> Wait, hold on. What he has to make a case of is what is what I disagree with. That <clears throat> see, I don't see in that sense that the loved object is acting as a friend to the lover, but that for the lover, the loved object is a friend. The lover considers 
the loved object, the beloved, the lover, is a friend to the lover. Right. But it doesn't mean that the loved object is acting as a friend. Yeah, that's what Where's acting? Yeah, where are you getting that from? What? Where are you... Yeah, well, because the, air, the arrow is pointing from... Like, well, that's what I want to make clear, whether that model shows that the loved object considers, considers itself the friend to the lover, or whether that model just shows that the lover considers the beloved its friend. Uh, so he's, you got a question about your model. Yeah, I'm, I'm, with you. yeah. I'm, with you. I'm with you. How do you um, intend the arrow? Yeah, so Japan, yeah, we're looking at the word object, aren't we? Yeah. Tophiluminone, the beloved. The loved object, this is a loved object. No. Three. Three is. Three is. Three is. Pardon? Three. That's the loved. Object. Yeah. The loved object is one. Three. Three. The loved object is three? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is the subject of the sentence. Well, it's very good. For the copulative estim. Um. <laughs> I thought you put loving three and four were the proactive loving. No, that may be well, true. How about we stay with this one? Then it would be two. It should be two then. Three and four is the act. Then the loved, loved object would be the beloved. It should be two. Oh, excuse me. Not loving. I have the wrong number. Okay. Yeah. No problem. My three were so bold. I haven't so close. That should really be this. <laughs> Oh, I see your point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, my problem isn't really with... Let's see whether that's still true or not. His problem wasn't with the numbers, though. Mm. No. Um, well, I thought you said the act of loving. Hmm. So, in your model right here, Pierre, how, how do you understand the relationship of two with one? Well, that's yeah. what I'm, I am presently looking at, hmm. whether it's two or three. And which we're talking about, which way will the arrow go is what we're talking about, isn't it? And, and what the significance of the arrow is. Yeah, that's later. Well, that's Nabuya's question. I which think. is what? No, no, I like the way it's going. Okay. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, well, it should follow from this example, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, It depends upon how you use the word object, doesn't it? Well, could be the loved object be beloved? Yeah, I mean, he's talking. Oh, use numbers and tell me which way you want to draw the arrows. In, in that case, you could even be using five. Okay, how would you draw the arrows? Two to one. Sure. Um, well, just as long as this arrow indicates friend, I like it just how it is. It's a lover. That doesn't help. I'm sorry. Can't be a that, friend. That, that's what the sentence is saying, right? The the loved object. Okay. Is a friend to the lover. Yeah. Yes, is a friend. So is, this copulative is, identifying friend and loved object. It's a friend to the lover. Yeah. Because that beloved, was, that's what, that's, I like the arrow for that, because it's two. Because it's, he's looking at, he's looking in the other way, because before he was saying that if the lover loved the, Beloved. Why don't, why don't you come up and draw a picture? If the, well, I could no, just say no, it. No, 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 no. Try it. 
Well, if the I was just no, no, Chen not shot. Just come use the. Well, I don't know how to draw up there. Okay. Hey, that's what the chart is for. Yeah, well, you don't have to use it. If the if one in the paragraph before, if the one loves the lover, there's he either is hated by the lover or not or. Friends to the lover. Sorry, right lover. Now. Can you start over, Regina? I'm sorry. I use these words. So the question, as I understand the paragraph before, the lover uh, is is friends or, or has um, is the is the loving a um, okay? Is the, I'm just doing it just above. Above the quote? Yeah, he can either be, in return, even hated or is loved by the beloved. The lover can be either hated or loved oh. by the beloved. But now in the second part, it's um, down at the bottom, he talks about, I do not think so. Okay. Then the loved object... Oh, let's see. Well, he's saying, I do not think so, to the part about it being a lying poet. He's right. He's agreeing with Solon. Right. And in, in the Solon example, the loved object is a friend to the lover. He's happy to have your children as yeah, friends. Your the, the loved object, yeah. the beloved, <laughs> is a friend. Yes. Right. So the beloved is a friend to the lover. lover. Right. Okay. That's been... Wait a minute, which way do you want to put the arrow? So it'd be, well, I was doing, it would be this way. Yeah, okay. Same as what you have. The way I understood the confusion that arose is that Nobuya over here didn't know what you meant by the arrow. Like, what was the significance of the arrow? Like, did, did it indicate loving? Did it indicate the activity of love? Right, because if so, well, if it did, did I get did I get your puzzle? No. No. Well, let, let's let the gentleman over here answer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Did I did I get did I get your puzzle about the arrow? I do have a puzzle about the arrow. Yeah. I understood that puzzle to be um, how to understand what the arrow signified. Right. Right. So that that's. I like the direction of the arrow, but you know, as long as we understand that, it uh, it indicates that two is a friend to one. No business of what you're saying. The act of loving per se. Yeah, but when I take the child and parent example, <laughs> the child is punished. The child hates the parent. The parent still considers the child a friend, or is it? The child that considers the parent the friend, even though he hates. Right? If it's the latter, then you have that contradiction, and then you'll be looking at the function of loving. Uh, could you draw some pictures on the board? Kind of you get to do the drawing. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm understanding you. So. <laughs> I presume you're either agreeing or disagreeing. I, no, I don't. I wouldn't. Right, you, you taught me not to do that. You've got to collect all the data first before you go to understanding. I'm okay. I, I don't even understand what he was just saying, to be honest with you. you know, I don't want to give it full by his tone. You know? Small. So wait, first, is the problem I'm posing clear, or is the problem itself yeah. not clear? Well, who's who's well, not friends clear. to what? <coughs> Pardon? Who's friends to whom under the parent-child situation? That's what I'm hearing. Oh, Nabuya, one, one second. Is it, wasn't your original question, is the object acting as a friend? Acting, Isn't that yeah. the issue? Right, just to clarify it, I was putting it in those terms. Yeah, the, the, 
that the object is acting as a friend? That's your question, right? And I wasn't reflecting that ang language accurately. <laughs> it's part of it. Well, I don't care which way it goes. It's, it's just that I'm trying to understand this. Um, so, I'm going to redraw it, though, just so I can get... Here's the loved object, the baby. And here's the mother. So it says, the loved object is a friend to the lover. So there is some kind of relationship going that we're going to call friend. Now the way I... I read it in Greek too, so that, that gives me like uh, uneasiness about the English, but just doing the English, the loved object is a friend to, or let's just say, the baby is a friend to the mother could either mean the baby is looking at the mother and considers the mother its friend. One, right? Or two, the baby is a friend to the mother means for the mother, the baby is a friend. That's, that would mean it's in her eye, in her state of mind that the baby is a friend, mm -hmm. not the baby's. Mm -hmm. Or three. What's the third? That there is a state of friend that goes beyond what any of them uh, perceive it to be. That's how I read the Greek, right there. Okay. That clear? Uh -huh. There's a state okay. of what? Okay. Yeah. A state of being a friend. It's more of a uh, friendhood. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it, that it's above whether whether one hates the other or loves the other. It would be irrelevant. Yeah. Thomas Taylor is not ambiguous. Well, right. Okay. So that's the second question. Yeah. Yeah. So then, then how is given that? How do you? What's your meaning in this model? I just want what you say. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. Right. Okay. Here. What, what, I, what I am doing is kind of fun, and let's see if I can get you into it, all right? <laughs> I didn't want to go to the example until we first got that sentence down. So, and I know that's an interesting way of going. So let me ask you. Uh, What is this man? If you just came across that phrase, the loved object. The loved object. I love that. What would it mean? Yeah. To use that, that so line. Someone here for you, trying to teach you. The thing that is love. The what you doing? <laughs> the loved object, would that be the, the same as the object of the love? Yes. Yeah. The object of the loving. The Just the object of love. Yeah. Like beer. But it could also mean, it could also mean another thing, too. What? What? It, it, could, mean, it could mean the loved object, as in the... The thing of being loved as an see, object. I like what you're saying, you see, because I want to stay with this phrase, and you're saying there's something peculiar about it. It can go not just this way, right, but another way. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. What is the other way? In the way up there. The Here, no, 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 no. Write it. Write it rather than point, like I do. Well, up here we we call this um, the love itself. Yeah, it, so it's that that thing. The five. Love, the love itself. Well, the five, five is the love. Forget the numbers. I'll start the over. Loving. The, uh, the eleven. Words. The blue line. Yeah. That that this this being uh, loved. That that the itself. The, the ob that as an object. 
the, the act of love as an object? The, the act yeah. of loving as an object. The object of the love. So the love, the object of the love. The, it could read it either way, I guess. I don't know. The, the, no, no, no. Right. Say it again, please. Yeah. The, the act of loving is the object of the love. There's, there's, the, there's the object of the love. There's, there's two ways of looking at it. You know, that there's... Yeah, write them. Write them. Okay. With a picture or with a word? Yeah. yeah. Make clear what you're saying okay. with words. With words. And pictures. Make clear words, pictures, with diagrams. Not I, I, form if necessary. It's going to go someplace, I assure you. Okay, uh, but let's give, it a, give it a few minutes. All right, so the if, lines at work. if this is... Uh, is this, were you going to put it into words? Oh, bummer. <laughs> That's harder. Um, Showing off his skill, yeah. right. drawing. Dang. Master him. I can see most of you people have had classes in anatomy <laughs> like I have. Yeah. Object. Number one. If, if, then this, if the other way I was, you know, the other possible reading of the words, the object of the love, is that the love is, mm. is the action. As opposed to the one way, to, the initial way that I read it is the object of the love is yes yes exactly what does thank, you. thank you for helping well, yeah. help. right. I don't know that we're done yet <laughs> okay. Okay. I just wrote it down okay right. okay, okay. next step okay action. stay with the words from what would you agree one way you're seeing one way you're seeing of understanding this phrase is this is that correct yes mm -hmm. Okay. What would be the object of the love? The beloved. The beloved. The beloved. All right. Agree? Now hold on to that. If that's the case, that's being called a friend to the lover. Indeed. Now picture that, all right? Try it. The loved object is the beloved. The loved object is the beloved. Uh huh. And that's going to be a friend to the lover. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what that's what, that's what Walter said. Uh, is is the object. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait, 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 wait. Just seven. Mm. So then, the loved object, right? Is the beloved, right? And, uh, and that's going to be a friend of the lover. Is that right? Yeah. I like the two. Yeah, two is what? important. Who's the guy? A friend to the lover. A friend to the lover. Right, to the lover. Now, how are you going to represent that now? Come on, now we try. The lover and lover? Yeah. Two points to one, as a friend as well. Oh. That there's a relationship on the side of the uh, object. Yeah. Towards the lover. Towards the lover. That there's a relationship. That's what it sounds like. No, at this no, point. no, no, no. To has a friendship to the lover. It's a dative of respect. Now, uh, is it? Is that what they use for the relationship? Loved object, which is the beloved. I'm just talking about two. Is a friend to the lover. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so what next? Right. That's belabored. Now we should be able to look at the example with the child, shouldn't we? 
Yes. Okay. Then the loved object is a friend to the lover, it would seem, alike whether it loves or hates. No. For instance, newborn children. So, so if if the beloved loves or hates, it's still a friend to the lover. I'm sure. Yeah. Whether or not the beloved loves or hates, it is a That's friend right. friend to the lover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a child. Yeah, like a child. Yeah, like a child. That's what you wrote. Mm -hmm. For instance, newborn children who have either not begun to love or already hate, are neutral to it. if yeah. punished by their mother or their father, are yet at that very moment, and in spite of their hate, especially and preeminently friends to their parents. I'm happy with that. Good. But the conclusion then, a friend regardless. the conclusion then, according to Taylor, is the lover, therefore, from this reasoning, will not be the friend, but the beloved. And therefore? And therefore, it? The, the, the lover... Oh, you lost it. Try it again. Oh, go ahead. No, no. You, you have it. <laughs> I interrupted you. I shouldn't have done that. Well, just that the love comes back to the lover. The lover becomes his own beloved. No, just friend. Even if the beloved hates him. No, friend. I gave an example. Well, it's okay. To the lover. See, now the question is, see, whether we can use this in the case of the child. Here, uh, I can say, uh, when I, even when I was punished for doing something, <clears throat> it was an underlying scene. If I took time to think about it, now I'm older, I reflect on it, that I realized I was being loved and it meant good towards me. So, you know, even as a child, you see that, you know, but you want to get away with what you can. No, see, the example uh, is not yet able to love. It's neutral. Or hate. Yeah, or hate. Or hate. Right. Yeah, both of them, so he's neutral. Yeah, that's right. It's a neutrality here. That's right. Okay, so Either friend then no. takes a new, a new position to love. No. That's right. That's right. Right? I don't get it. I don't get it. All right. We pal around. We're friends. Uh -huh. right. Got the car, you got the money, you better get gas. And if punished by their mother or their father, yeah. are yet at the very moment, and in spite of their hate, you don't love me, you're just a friend. they are especially and preeminently friends to their parents. Then the argument shows that it is not the lover who is a friend, but the, the right? It's not the lover, but the loved, but the beloved. It's not the lover who is a friend, but the loved. Number two. Even if it's hated. Mom loves kid, kid friendly kid, kid friendly mom. 
So it's not the lover, but the loved. Mm. But doesn't it isn't doesn't that lead to the absurdity? Isn't it like a reductio in that respect? Well, that's well, I well. Um, because it leads to the conclusion that the mm -hmm. child, when he's the moment of his hating his parents, would have to be the beloved, would have to be the lo loving the lover, because it leads to the conclusion that um, the beloved is the friend to the parent at that very moment when he is hating him. I thought that's that's the fundamental piece that leads to the gross observant absurdity. Because yeah. then this is going to end up as an impossible case. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he has to explain why. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the reason that because then they no, that's that's then exactly they have to separate right. out. That's right. The hated. Mm -hmm. Because if you take this to be the case then all of these conclusions should follow. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the conclusions, it looks like that is impossible. Mm -hmm. oh. A great irrationality. But wait a minute, see, it's interesting that, that it may be impossible, but it may be the case. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other level, maybe the same. Now, that's strange. I like that idea of friend beyond the... Or it's yeah. apparently contradictory, but yeah. yet nevertheless okay. true. Okay, but only under one one condition. Let's hold that. Hmm. Then this argument shows that it's not the lover. It's not the lover. Not the lover is the problem, but the love. <clears throat> He may not yet be able to love or hate, but is enduring that punishment and still will, have, will be the friend. Hmm. Of the provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really conclusions. Yeah, really okay, conclusions. And it is the hated who is the enemy, not the hater. Hmm. <laughs> then people often, right, then people must often be loved by their enemies and hated by their friends. And be friends to their enemies, enemies to their friends. If the loved object, same, same language now, see, same language. If the loved object is a friend rather than the loving agent. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lover. Mm -hmm. Loving agent. Mm -hmm. uh, so that takes out five as an agent. Yeah, this is absurd. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. We have the same dilemma in astrology. <laughs> we do. We have the very same dilemma in, in okay. astrological folklore. <laughs> Now, I think it'd be fun to uh, move to Thomas Taylor and start a new model. Do we have time? About what time? I think we're but isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, I, I did. Yeah. Oh, it's midnight. Pardon? Yeah. It's midnight. Oh, I thought it was 11. Close to 11. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm not reading. Yeah, okay. Well, we do the Thomas Taylor next time. Oh, come on. Yeah. Let's keep going. We were well, right this one little passage, what we were just reading? Okay. Yeah, but that'll, that'll that's only because time. we took so much time on the first. 20 seconds to read it. Should be easy. Mm.
I'm I'm for it if you guys are for it. Read it, Julie. Yeah, let's do it. Oh well. Could you explain to me what hate is then? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, there goes that. I'm very serious. It's like, I don't know. You can say it's the opposite, yeah, right? No, it's an intense yeah. dislike for a situation that's harm, that may harm you. I mean, I'd like to be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, discipline. <laughs> How about uh, it's an intense dislike towards okay. something that may harm you? Okay, it's been suggested. Yeah, it's okay. But if child been, may hate, how do you mean? Yeah, it's been suggested we just look at the Thomas Taylor and see whether we can structure it. All right. All right. So, um, oh, okay. Do you want to Thomas Taylor? My one? copy was somewhere. Do you want Thomas Taylor? I think Nancy yeah, took my copy. Yeah, could have. Oh, I've got a copy here. Yeah. Like no, no. <clears throat> Trade. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I just felt like if he was going to go in a whole new exploration, he needed to know. And because it also needs a whole new term for the first thing. Lovers, is it not possible, therefore, that the lover what may page? be hated? What page are you on? 207. by the object of his love. there not be a lover who is not in his turn beloved by the object of his love, there may. Mm -hmm. Is it not possible, therefore, that, that a lover may be hated? which lovers sometimes appear to suffer from the objects of their love. For though they most ardently love, they are not loved in return, but on the contrary, sometimes hated. Or does not this appear to you to be true? Very much so. In a case of this kind, therefore, I replied, does not the one love and is not the other beloved? Yes. In this case, therefore, everybody does not the one love. And is not the other beloved? This one loves. Yeah. That's the beloved. <coughs> yes. Which then of these is the friend of the other?
Is the loved a friend of the beloved? Whether loved in return or hated? Or in this case, is neither the friend of the other, <coughs> since mutual love does not subsist. Right. Now therefore, the case appears to us to be otherwise than what appeared to us before. But then it seemed that if one alone loved, both were friends. But now that neither is a friend uh, unless both mutually love. Then well, this appears to be the case. No one, therefore, is a friend to the object of his love unless he's loved in return. Neither, therefore, are those the friends of horses whom horses do not love in return, nor blah, 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 blah. It's looking like the same model. But he's, he's now bringing up an argument against that conclusion, isn't he? It does not appear that any that anyone is, but neither, therefore, as those the friends of horses, so whom horses do not love in return. So he's bringing in the argument that although there may, we just agree that unless they both mutually love, this appears to be the case. No one, therefore, is a friend to the object of his love unless the beloved in return loves. But then the next set is horses and dogs and wines don't return their return their love. So, so he's bringing in an argument against that, or he's bringing up a case. Neither, therefore, are those the friends of horses, whom horses do not love in return, nor are those the friends of quails and dogs, who are not mutually beloved by these. Right. So, ridiculous. Of course they are. Well, um, I think it's a good time to quit. Yeah. Because it raises another question with Thomas Taylor, and I don't think we have the time to go into it. We'll do it next week. But uh, just as a, since it's, we are ending, I thought I'd point out that the line, the lover, therefore, from his, re let's see, uh, the sentence about the children, whether he loves or whether he hates, just as children recently born partly do not yet love and partly hate when they are chastised by their mother or father, and at the very time in which they hate, they are the highest they are in the highest degree beloved by their parents. And in the lobe, he's saying it, it's that um, especially and preeminently friends to their parents. So you, it, in the lobe, it looks like the children are friends to their parents at the same time that they hate their parents. But over here, it's they are in the highest degree beloved by their parents. It's reversed. Yeah, the lobe is the better translation there. What? The lobe is the better translation. So the parents are not... Do you, do you hear what you said? I heard, but so the parents then don't love their children, whether the children hate them or not. Because that's what the Thomas Taylor is saying. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that as far as dealing with the superlative filtata, preeminently friends captures it better than beloved. It's just, filtata is not a is not a passive form. I'm just saying which one does which way is it going? 
in the Thomas Taylor, I read it, that they are in the highest degree beloved by their, the children are loved <coughs> by the parents. Right. Whether the child hates them or it's not. It's the same relationship when we covered that beloved is friend to the dative. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Lover. Unless you can under, unless you're making it clear in the Greek. Because in the over here you're saying that then Well ahead. do you understand my question? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I thought I did. Whoa. That, right. You're looking at the translation of the Thomas Taylor and saying are you saying that it, this is not the case anymore? That the you know parents have their I'm not challenging you, I'm just reading the text. Well let me finish. Well, are, are you're you, pointing it as a, it, it, it's personal to you. I'm not doing that. You did question me, didn't you? You tried to make a point over here about beloved, and I'm not working at the word, the the words of certain. I made a point that the the Loeb translation is the better translation for that particular word that is translated as preeminently friends okay. in the Loeb, and most beloved. What was it? Be most beloved in the Thomas Taylor. Yeah. That's the point I was making. Okay. And I, I don't, I'm not arguing that point. Okay. Okay. My Perfect. point, <laughs> my point is that the, the direction between the two seem is opposite. That, in other words, in when the Thomas Taylor, the what it looks like in, if I'm reading this correctly, what's the opposite is that the, the parents in the Thomas Taylor are the ones that are loving the child when he, although hates the parents. <laughs> Over here, it looks like the child loves the parents, although he hates them. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So that's a difference if that's there. That's the point where we're going. But hey, just for the fun of it, okay? Uh, a lot of this is going to hang on this one word. Right? Yeah. yeah, it does. Like, does How's that? Does friend fit into this? And under what conditions is yeah. going to be the issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.